Welcome to the Crumb Cake Kitchen. Today we'll be making a delicious gingerbread log cake with cinnamon whipped filling, white chocolate bark, and sugared cranberries. Let's get started. In a small bowl, beat three egg yolks on high speed until they begin to thicken. This should take about three or four minutes. Add half a cup of fancy molasses and one tablespoon of melted butter to the mixture and beat on medium speed until combined. It's important to use fancy molasses for this recipe as it has a much less intense flavor than cooking molasses. If you use cooking molasses, the flavor will overpower the cake. Once combined, set it aside until later. In the mixer bowl, beat three egg whites on high speed until soft peaks begin to form. This should take three or four minutes. Combine one cup of all-purpose flour, one half teaspoon of cinnamon, one half teaspoon of cloves, one half teaspoon of ginger, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Now give it a good stir. Now that the egg whites have formed soft peaks, Add one quarter cup of white sugar gradually and beat on high speed until the sugar is dissolved and soft, glossy peaks have formed. Place the whipped egg whites into the egg yolk and molasses mixture. Now gently fold the flour mixture in as well. Mix until fully incorporated, but be careful not to deflate your batter. This recipe calls for a 10 by 15 pan, and I only have an 18 by 10 inch pan on hand. So I've improvised a little by rolling up some aluminum foil and forming a ledge at the end of the pan to decrease the size. Grease the pan well, including all the way up the sides and cover it with parchment paper. Spread the gingerbread mixture evenly throughout the pan, making sure that it reaches the corners. Bake in a 350 degree oven for 10 to 12 minutes. The cake is done when it springs back when you touch it gently with your finger. While the cake is baking, grab a clean dish towel and a cooling rack or baking tray. You'll need this to flip the cake over while it's hot. I like to give mine a light tap on the counter before placing it in the oven to get rid of any excess air bubbles. Gently release the sides from the parchment paper with a knife. Sprinkle a generous layer of icing sugar on the entire surface of the cake. This is what prevents it from sticking to the towel. Now cover with a clean dish towel, followed by a baking tray or cooling rack. Carefully lift the pan over, but remember that it's hot. Now remove the baking pan and gently peel back the parchment paper. Cover this side of the cake with icing sugar as well. Now flip the tea towel over the cake and gently begin to roll the cake up from the short side. Take your time with this. Rolling the cake up while it's hot will help it to retain its shape and it will be less likely to crack. Set this aside until completely cooled. Now let's make the white chocolate shards. Melt the white chocolate in 30 second intervals on medium heat until fully melted. 
I'm using Merkin's white chocolate molding wafers. They're so easy to work with and there's no need to temper them. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper. Now pour the melted white chocolate out onto the parchment paper. Using a palette knife, spread a thin even layer throughout the tray. Make sure your chocolate layer is thin. It'll look best when it's finished. If you melt too much, just pour the remainder into a baggie and use it for another recipe. That way there's no waste. I used about four cups of white chocolate molding wafers altogether. Take another piece of parchment paper and lay it on top of the melted chocolate. Now gently rub your hand over the paper to smooth out the chocolate underneath. Carefully roll up the parchment paper and place it in the fridge for about one hour to set. You only need about two of these white chocolate rolls to cover the cake, so I could have got away with about two and a half cups of white chocolate molding wafers. Now that the chocolate is completely set, you can start unrolling it on the counter. You'll hear a crack as you begin to unroll it, and I found that the slower I unrolled the parchment, the more I liked the look of the bark. You'll end up with some large pieces and some smaller pieces, but that's really the beauty of this design. The more varied the sizes of the bark pieces, the more natural the cake will look. I'm going to accent this cake with sugared cranberries. Begin by making a sugar syrup using one cup of white granulated sugar and one cup of water. Wash your cranberries before you use them and remove the excess water. I cook the sugar syrup on medium heat for about five minutes or until all the sugar has completely dissolved. Here I have my sugar syrup and a bowl of berry sugar. Berry sugar is just white granulated sugar but in finer granules. Place a handful of cranberries into the sugar syrup and then using a slotted spoon, shake them off and drop them into the berry sugar. Give the cranberries a gentle toss in the berry sugar until they're evenly covered and then set them out onto a cooling rack to dry. It takes about an hour or so for them to fully dry, but they look beautiful and they taste great. Repeat this process until you have as many cranberries as you need. Now let's make the cinnamon whipped cream filling. Whip two cups of heavy cream, 33 or 35%, on medium speed until soft peaks form. Add one teaspoon of ground cinnamon and one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Now add a quarter cup of icing sugar. You can add a little more if you like, but I don't like mine very sweet. Now continue whipping it on high speed until you reach the stiff peak stage. Now that the gingerbread cake is cooled completely, carefully unroll it onto the counter. I can see I went a little overboard with the icing sugar on the cake, but it's no big deal. Just swish the extra away. There are some minor cracks on the cake, but the whipped cream filling will act like a glue to hold it all together. Drop spoonfuls of filling onto the cake and spread a nice even layer all the way to the edge.
just like when you're icing a cake, keep a good layer of filling between your palette knife and the cake to avoid stirring up any of those unsightly crumbs. You should be able to use up all of the filling for this cake. Now carefully begin rolling the cake back up, starting with the inside edge. Always finish with the cake seam side down on the counter. If you see any little cracks once you've rolled up the cake, just take your whipped cream and a palette knife and fill the crack. Now roll the cake up snugly in plastic wrap and place seam side down in the fridge to chill for at least two hours. Once your cake is well chilled, you're ready to frost. Carefully trim a little off each end to expose the beautiful roll underneath. I'm covering this cake with vanilla bean Swiss meringue buttercream. It's so silky, light, and not overly sweet, and I think it works very well with this recipe. First, spread a thin layer of buttercream onto the cake to seal down those pesky little crumbs and place it in the fridge for about 20 minutes to firm up or five minutes in the freezer. You can use Swiss meringue, American buttercream, or even chocolate ganache to cover this cake. If you'd like to see a tutorial on making Swiss meringue buttercream, click the link above. Now spread a generous layer of buttercream all over the cake. A lot of bakers choose not to cover the ends of the cake with buttercream since they like the look of the roll. If you choose to do that, make sure you cover the exposed ends of the cake after decorating with plastic wrap so they don't dry out before serving. Next time I think I'll leave the ends exposed as well. You could easily stop at this stage and serve just as is. Now it's time to add the bark pieces, and my suggestion is, don't overthink it. I started at the top middle of the cake and slightly overlapped each piece on the top edge to get a nice textured look. Then I worked my way down the sides of the cake. There's really no pattern to follow here. Just do what you think looks best. The more random the sizing, the better the cake will look. I do like overlapping the bottom edge of each row with the next piece. You can cut some of the pieces with a knife or break them with your fingers, whatever works best for you. I've washed and dried some spruce and wrapped the ends in floral tape. Now I'll just push the sprigs into the ends of the cake. No Christmas Yule log is complete without a little greenery to accent those sugared cranberries. Add as many sugared cranberries as you like to accent your finished cake, and be sure to add some to each plate when serving. I love how festive this cake is, and it's a lot simpler than it looks, but you don't need to tell your friends and family that. If you'd like to see more in-depth tutorials like this one, please like and subscribe. As always, thank you for watching.